Hey, what's up? This is the network of sports entertainment. Nobody knows sports like we know sports. Yeah, we may not have any of those teams you like, but we have all sport. And if it's not a sport, trust us, we'll find a way to make it one. No. Hey guys, it's me, Tabitha, joined by Joey and Omar Sandwiches of the Network of Sports Entertainment, and this is the first ever Absurd City Fantasy Football League. That's right, a bunch of characters from the SJP universe are going head-to-head in fantasy football. I'm here with Joey, who will be telling us about each of the characters, and Omar Sandwiches will be giving us the football lowdown. In this league, 8 of the 12 participants will make the playoffs, with a tiebreaker being bench points, if should it ever come to that. Quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flex, a kicker, and defense and special teams should be listed there. That will be the roster format, standard PPR scoring, and Joey, what does this say here at the bottom? Tabitha, that says no death threats or credit fraud because I really don't need all these guys arguing and trying to murder each other. It's just fantasy. It's not that serious. Well, that's why you're not in my fantasy league, Joey, and that's probably why you're not in death either. I'm kind of in it in a way if you really think about it, but yeah, I get it. I'm not directly in the league. And this is what they will be playing for. The champion will win the Golden T-Bone Stake. Is that, that's really an impressive trophy there. It is, but but Tabitha, that is actually a real steak underneath all that gold there. If you really want to eat the steak, you could could go for it or gold for it. (laughs) Right, and uh, second place, the runner up is gonna get three bowls of spaghetti. I guess we'll find out later exactly what a kind of spaghetti, who's going to be providing it, and last place, nobody wants this, a big expired bottle of butt juice, and we don't want to be butt juice on this channel, but somebody has to be butt juice. It's like I tell the Little League, of, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you butt juice, and more often than not, I, I tell them the latter. The league consists of two divisions, 12 participants in total, six participants in each division, and the future division, presented by Beverage, features Joey from the future, his arch rival, Mathias, our own Jake Summer. Joey, your brain is is participating. Jet Stone, the scientist, and the pterodactyl. And Joey will let us know about each of those characters momentarily as we look at the historic division presented by Dead Duck for the desperately unemployed. Go on, Dead Duck. Joey from the past. Our employer, Cowboy Amos Payne, the founder of Nose, merging with Yellow Stream. Gary Nuts, another good colleague of ours, Mr. Geezer himself. Little Fire Engine Joey, always adorable. Sir Joey, nice monocle and mustache there. And then the janitor who I met with Joey at the 100 subscriber special. Yes, the guy who farted right at the start of the puppet show. And speaking of puppet shows, you see we each have some nice little garb on. All these products you can find on the Sometimes Joey Plays at the Absurd City Mall store online at Redbubble. Click the link in description and check back often for new stuff. So let's take a look at each of our participants, and we're going to do it in order from the longest odds to the shortest. And so far, the underdog is going to be Little Fire Engine Joey. Yeah, LFEJ, if some people call him that. Uh, little Fire Engine Joey is basically just me with a my head with a little helmet on it. And then the little fire truck, he comes by whenever there's a butt juice alert. He comes by if someone gets uh, their existence burnt, a roasted comeback, anything like that. Uh, he's a pretty good, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good little guy. Always helps us out. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's a fire truck, but... You know, his team might be fire as well. I'm surprised that he's the longest odds. You run into trouble if you have multiple players from the same team when the bye week comes up. But uh, that and Debo Samuel is there. You know, who's who's to know what Austin Eckler can do this season? This guy's not out of it by any means. You know, he might have a hot start, but he's definitely in it. And we cross over into the future division, and it's Joey from the future with long odds of the YRU betting championship odds at plus 1,100. Yeah, this is uh, basically just me in the future. Uh, He defends absurdity. He's got, like, a laser phantom cannon gun robot arm thing. Um, He... Uh, he's also there for if I need to make an editing note while recording. I'll say, Joey, in the future, can you please do this? And he's got a cool robotic voice. Well, uh, hopefully he is from the future in the sense that he knows that that plus 1100 is misleading because uh, you would think uh, that someone with that much advanced knowledge would uh, do uh, better. But hey, Christian McCaffrey is on the team along 
with a couple of good serviceable wide receivers, support wide receivers, and with uh, Nick Chubb still going to be out for a little bit, so Jerome Ford can help out. Uh, that defense, he's probably going to go week by week to see who his defense is going to be. That's bringing up scientist Jed Stone with plus 1,000 odds by Why Are You Betting for the championship. And I like this guy. He's pretty cool. Um, he does enjoy a certain recreational activity, and I'm not necessarily talking about golf. Um, he's He was inspired by an NPC in Pokemon Crystal Scientist, Jed, and when I saw him, I'm like, that, that's just not the name of a scientist. Uh, he also explained to us in the Minnesota Adventures video why people fart during airplanes. Well, he's cooking up something in the lab here. Brock Purdy is very consistent in terms of getting his numbers padded thanks to all the weapons, but really also kind of seen as a game manager. Balanced running attack and offensive options, I think that he will kind of stay in the middle. And now Mr. Knows himself, and uh, no, that is not a play on his uh, facial appearance, Cowboy Amos Payne in the historic division at plus 900 for the championship odds. Yeah, Cowboy Amos uh, is actually a pretty cool guy. I know he comes off a little assertive and rough at first, especially with that voice! <laughs> and um, But he's, uh, he's a cool guy, uh, put together nose, uh, got yellow stream for us, and uh, I, he's, he's a cool cat. <laughs> Second time you made that joke, that was a good impression. I can impersonate everybody. Really? Yeah, I can. I can also do Tanya and Jake Summer and just about everyone else. Uh, yeah, but uh, back to like football stuff. Uh, so uh, anyone else notice? I know I noticed. Cowboy with Cowboys. <laughs> you know, some people will will play as a fan. Some people will play for metrics and stuff like that. This guy likes his Cowboys and he got a bunch of them on there. Hopefully that doesn't bite him in the butt, but I know Joe doesn't care because Joey would think, you know, oh, if the Cowboys suck, that means that's good. That's right. Sir Joey is next in the division. Joey, who is this? Tabitha, this is actually the first alternate Joey or multiverse Joey, whatever you want to call it. It's basically my face with a monocle, a mustache, and a hat. He actually appeared with Tanya at the same time, but Tanya, believe it or not, didn't have a name, and she didn't even speak at that in that moment. Oh, that's what? That's, well, that's outstanding. Beautiful piece of information there. Plus 800 for the odds on the why are you betting, but what I see is a lot of offensive possibilities on the receiving end. Chris Olave, Christian Kirk, Sam Laporta, you know, Tony Pollard did a lot of screen passes, and there's a lot of potential here. I think that we could see Sir Joey in the playoffs. We could possibly see him at least compete for the championship to the semifinal round. Some early predictions there from our analyst, Mr. Omar Sandwiches. Going back to the Futurist Division is the Pterodactyl. Yeah, Tanya met the Pterodactyl when she was learning to drive. Um, apparently, the Pterodactyl came in, wrecked the car, and tried to bring it back to its Pterodactyl family. Uh, they made amends uh, when they met, I think, in an airport lounge, and uh, you know, caught up, and uh, they're good buddies now. He's scary. His team, mm, it can be scary. It could sneak up on you there. Plus 700 for the betting odds. Uh, you know, I see a balanced running attack with uh, the two running backs there. Garrett Wilson is supposed to get Aaron Rodgers back, hopefully for more than just a couple snaps. Thon Kincaid, another up-and-coming uh, tight end in the league, and definitely some options on the bench there. So I'm th this is a sleeper, I think, for the championship. We move on to the old geezer himself, Gary Nuts. When you want to think old-school sports grandpa, here you go. Uh, Gary loves baseball, he loves sports, his wife, his family, kids, grandkids, ribs and whiskey, you cannot forget the whiskey, and uh, him and Jake Summer are always going at it, uh, he's, uh, he's a great guy. Yeah, it seems like he knows a little bit about his football too, you get Lamar Jackson and Tyreek Hill, I just see offense all over the place. Nick Chubb is still out, I mean these are the draft results, so I'm sure he's going to make some sort of move, he can move someone in, out of the flex into running back, uh, maybe he will... Uh, pick somebody up while he keeps Nick Chubb on IR, but uh, that's a good, good person to have when you're thinking about a comeback. Uh, I think Gary's going to compete very well in the league. Takes us to the janitor, Joey. Yeah, so as Tabitha had alluded to, um, this guy was at the Absurdity Theater during the uh, 100 subscriber special, so I think it was the janitor. It was it was discovered that he's the janitor there. And we had a puppet show in the Sunsleep Lounge beforehand, and I really wanted to take part in the puppet show. He did as well. And uh, he farted right at his first line. And not that it would have helped even if he didn't fart because he only speaks in random grumbles. Well, if he farts, he can tell his opponents, eat my dust. Joe Burrow could definitely take this team back to the playoffs with a nice 
speedy young running back in Rashad White. Double trouble there with the Lions. But hey, look at this way. You get some running game going. And Martin Brown is still going to be a viable target. Joey, your brain is playing but you're not can you make that make sense for us please yeah i think i should make it clear that really all these characters are different entities so yes that is my brain but that's also the brain for the future joey the past joey etc 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 um yeah i i didn't want to participate he did and uh, this little this butthole right here this guy he's basically the reason for all my paranoid thoughts and anxiety yeah i'm, I'm sorry to hear that that sucks um and also, I don't know why, but I, I'm American. I have an American voice. And he has, like, some, like, it's, like, British or Australian or something. I I, I have no connection to to those areas, so I, I don't know. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I did think that was kind of weird. But, um, okay, but uh, as for his uh, team, uh, Joey, definitely thinking about your, your favorite team. Because, look, there's A.J. Brown. D.K. Metcalf, you've got some pretty tall wide receivers there. For Kyler Murray, expect him to do a lot of running. Expect there to be a lot of offense on this one there is no surprise that his odds are you know plus 400 according to why are you betting by the way if you think why are you betting is real it's it's not boards uh, getting on us mathias is that plus 300 so the inspiration for mathias actually my two biggest fears as a child fire and moths so this is a this is basically my childhood worst nightmare here he is the uh, arch rival of joy from the future but they've really been buddies more than anything so i don't know what's what's going on there but but still i'm i'm not coming i'm not coming anywhere near that guy yeah this moth is on fire well so is this team you got the defending rookie of the year paired with travis Entian jr somehow this guy has jamal chase and justin jefferson so he must have worked out something i don't know what what was going on with these picks here but uh he's got both of them so uh good luck everybody else justin tucker pretty much the ravens going the other side of the field three points Okay, our last pair of teams here, and it's Joey from the past, who is the second favorite, the runner-up favorite, whatever you want to put it, plus 200 odds on why are you betting. I love Joey from the past. He's basically just a caveman version of me, and it, I just think he's just so, like, endearing the way that he's got, like, that half-smile going there. He carries that club around, and, yeah, he can only speak in grumbles as well, but he's got a big heart. He's got a big heart. He could have a big stake, too, at the end of the season. Patrick Mahomes. I mean, a two-time defending Super Bowl quarterback also has his tight end on this team. That, that's double bubble, double trouble. Derrick Henry and Alvin Kamara are big, big offensive weapons, weapons that can get you a lot of points on the ground. And Mike Evans, you like having at least one tall receiver on your team to maybe get you those 50-50 balls at the end zone. And there's only one participant left that could be the favorite, and that is Jake Summer. And Joey, you said you're not surprised by this. I'm not because Jake Summer is a numbers guy. He's an analytics guy. He's a very big dork. We all knew that. But, you know, he probably is going off of analytics and research with this more than general knowledge of professional American football. So, um, you know, he might get in your noise when he talks. But other than that, um, he's, you know, he's all right. And he got a new sitcom, too. I thought that was very funny. Yeah, just, just all these weapons right here. Josh Allen, Brees Hall, uh, C.D. Lamb, Puka Nuka. Just a lot of options here. Uh, might want to bench one of those Houston guys and just keep him on hand for perhaps an injury or something like that. But man, he did a great job with this draft and he will, at the very least, I guarantee, will make it to playoffs. Joey, how is this going to be produced weekly? You know, Tabitha, I have some ideas, but I don't want to say it out loud right now because I don't need somebody coming back here and being like, oh, you said you was going to do this, but you did this instead. What about when you said this? So we'll just see. The only way to find out is if you subscribe to Sometimes Joey Plays, follow us throughout the professional American football season. I feel like we should be allowed for fair use to say all those things. I mean, we've said team news already. Anyway, I'm Tabitha. On behalf of Joey and Omar Sandwiches, good night, and we'll see you when we see you. Wow, the copyright flag actually, you know, uh, got us this time. So uh, here I am going to do it acoustic. I think about you every night and day. You took my heart and you took my pride away. I hate myself for loving you. Can't break free from the things that you do. I want to run, but I walk back to you. That's why I hate myself for loving you. Yeah.